Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We will check out the front pages of our national dailies as usual. We call it Off the Press and we have Okunabon Kutaria who joins the conversation. Good morning, Okunabon Kutaria. It's good to have you join us this uh, Monday morning and compliment on the season. Good morning, Becky. Good morning, Justin. And good morning, dear. Good morning, Okunabon. All right, let's start off with the leadership newspaper this morning and uh, we'll take a look at the leadership. I mean, the leadership newspaper, the board caption on the leadership newspaper. It talks about the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Political parties oppose NAS overriding President Mohamed Buhari. And that's a board caption on the leadership. Now, underneath, there are several riders. Uh, the first says, say it's bad for his le legacy. Uh, that's the first rider. Nas won't shift support for President Mohamed Buhari. Senate President declares, we won't interfere. PDP, APC keeps moving. I'm, I'm just wondering what that, that's the case at this point in time. I mean, it feels like, uh, you know, uh, unlike the PDP or the APC at this point in time, it feels like they have something in common. All right. Fear of low profit push banks to adopt Hold coal structure, six banks more to move. And uh, moving away from that header, you also have bandits kill 38 in Kaduna communities. And assault, how minister envoy save Nigerian passengers in Togo. I mean, that's what we were talking about just some minutes ago. Boni committee meets today talking about the APC National Convention. And Bishop Coker Max, 45 years of priesthood. And uh, you also have Livestock Plant Promises Solution to Head a Farmer Crisis or Clashes. This is some of the headlines on the leadership newspaper this morning. All right, away from the leadership, uh, we'll move on next to the nation uh, newspaper. It's still on the Electoral Act um, Amendment Bill. This quiet as Buhari declines assent to Electoral Act Bill. That's uh, the main headline for the nation this morning. There are some writers. Uh, President, President returns bill to National Assembly. Senators, reps, consult, and way forward. Uh, those are the writers on that particular story. Then uh, more stories above uh, the masthead. Chinese loans to Nigeria now $3.5 billion, uh, says DMO. Bandits kill 38 in Kaduna community attack. 11 kidnapped suspects. Uh, you know, held. Nigeria protests um, assault on citizens in Togo. NUJ, NGE won politicians against destructive politics. More stories on the front page of the nation this morning. A 2.8 or 2.6 trillion naira Nati shifts report on 77 firm status to fourth quarter. All right, uh, more stories there. Uh, only 25 varsities have full accreditation, says NUC. On the red strip just uh, below uh, insecurity, Nigeria looks toward uh, Turkey for drones, military equipment. All right, Abauchi records 153 cases of Lassa fever. A uh, couple sells Mount Old for 50k. All right, let's uh, move away from the nation down and check out uh, the Daily Independent newspaper. Looking at the Daily Independent newspaper, SPAC warns federal government against increasing taxes and tariffs in 2022. Says it will hurt businesses, increase unemployment, ask federal government to widen tax net to capture untaxed endeavors. Uh, this are riders underneath the board caption on the Daily Independent. You also have, we are in a war situation in Nigeria. IU, PDP chairman, is quoted on that, says, unity existence of Nigeria threatened on that Buhari. And Oshu 2022, Aregba Shola loyalists vow to unseat Governor Oyetola. And that's also uh, <clears throat> another caption you find this morning on the Daily Independent. Now, moving away from that, APC Ketika committee meets today, may shift convention date. Any shift will spell doom for party, says former Governor Ibri. Stop prosecuting prominent Niger Deltans, Pandev tells the EFCC. And please arrest 11 kidnappers in Tarabar and recovers 
seven AK-47 rifles, 121 live ammunition and others. And death toll in Kaduna bandits attack rises to 38. You also have new threshold raids, ground handling, coys, sign packs, and spells out sanction for violators. Uh, you also have the NCAA approves 25% discounted rates on new charges. These are the headlines on the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. All right, to the punch. Uh, next, uh, COVID-19 uh, federal government uh, issues uh, travel advice. Uh, Lagos vows Clamden as infection sore. Uh, more uh, writers underneath that story. Fleeing errant inbound travelers will be charged to court, commission their vows. Uh, avoid non-essential international national travels while we study Omicron and see the sea is quoted on that. 845 travelers test positive in seven days. Kano plans to vaccinate 15 million residents. And there's a beautiful pictorial there of, uh, you know, Christmas uh, Santa Claus. And uh, just to show you or remind <laughs> Nigerians that it is actually the U-Tide and uh, there's a whole lot of um, joy and uh, around right now. Well, away from that, above the ma masthead, uh, Punch Shines at Dame Awards wins Newspaper Editor of the Year and others. Uh, more stories are just below the pictorial there. The teen female soldier will be penalized for accepting uh, corpus uh, proposal, that's the Yami. Uh, federal government releases one billion naira grant to four states for pilot ranching. Twelve killed, scores injured in Bauchi, uh, Lagos Ibadan Expressway uh, crashes. Uh, more stories there now. Death toll in Kaduna, fresh bandit attack rises to 38, others missing. Police go after women for bullying newborn or buying rather a newborn for 50,000 naira, couple arrested. Togo Bene, Niger paid nothing for Nigeria's power supply, says NERC. Uh, just beside the masthead, federal government evacuates Nigerian passengers assaulted by Togolese officials, uh, begins probe, reps summon Aregbe Shola, NIS boss over foreign missions visa, uh, passport, contract. Those are the stories you can find on the Punch newspaper this Monday morning. All right, let's have Opunabon Katara join the conversation. Uh, once again, it's good to have you join us, Opunabon Katara. Thank you. And uh, we'll Thank, start you. Thank you. All right, let's start off with the leadership newspaper this morning, the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Uh, first of all, the, uh, the period for assent or withholding assent as granted by the Constitution has elapsed. And uh, some persons are calling that the national what assembly. Have point, not, not what do you have on your screen? Point. Okay, I'm sure that uh, that would be sorted out. Now, uh, some quarters are asking that uh, it should be, you know, they should override. The NAS should go ahead and override President Muhammad Buhari. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Oh, yes, it is within the virus, it is within the power of uh, the National Assembly to override. If uh, the president refuses to assent to a deal that is of national interest, and if the National Assembly decides to invoke that power, there is nothing wrong, especially in situations like this. And um, I would like to also enjoin the National Assembly to invoke its power in order to correct the impression that it is a rubber stamp assembly. A lot of us are not surprised that Mr. President did not assent to the bill. I had my doubt when he now referred the bill to INEC. That is a departure. That first and foremost is an anomaly. It's not necessary. INEC will always execute once it is a law. INEC had also said that in 2018-2019, when Mr. President declined access and that bill on the premise, ostensibly on the premise that it was quite close to the election. Even when I lucidly they said that it can go ahead with the amendment once if Mr. President assent to it as a that time, assented to it as a that time. So, and this time around now, to me it's a strategy, you know, it's like a Fabian policy. It now went to INEC. INEC did not waste any time. There was no procrastination on the part of INEC. It immediately made its recommendation to uh, 
the, the presidency. And that was the end of it. So that will tell you that Abinito, Mr. President, was not willing to ascend to him. There are contesting and contending issues. And I think the President is caught between two loyalties. It's turned between two loyalties. Uh, those that are saying, the governors, most of the governors that are saying don't ascend, and some loyalists that are saying, you promise to write, uh, leave your name in gold uh, by, uh, by the inclusion of time, uh, May 29, 2023, when you get visited. That was your promise. So ascend to it. So it's obvious that he's caught the tongue between two loyalties. And what he does is the best thing he did, probably acting in reliance upon the advice of a trusted person, like Malami, the El Honorable Attorney General, who also criticized the uh, amendment that is expressed, I think, the party. Yes, the issue of the uh, uh, what direct promise of the party. Um, Malami they condemned it. He said it was unnecessary and few other things. So probably it's actually relies on Paul Malami's own view. And that was why he declined assets. But a lot of us are not surprised when you consider the dilatoriness. Dilat I mean, it was not so difficult. What, 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 are you, what are you going to keep? And that is why a lot of people are saying that contentious direct primary plus wasn't started. So which means the whole, it was, a, it only was contrived, I believe, to ensure that there was some sort of controversy that would prevent the Mr. President assenting to the bill. You know, there are all kinds of theories playing up now. But whatever they are, he's the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So the boss stuff at his table. So what we expected was Mr. President to assent to that bill in order to ensure credibility in our election and in order to restore sanity in our society, because part of the problems we are having, part of the crisis we have in this country, is as a result of loss of confidence in our society. And that is uh, that, that loss of confidence is because every four years we throw up people that are not leaders, but people that are appointed or not, and so they are not in office in our own image. They go there and do whatever they want to do. Even still, you can imagine when we talk about the COVID-19 pandemic, when uh, uh, the people were out there, you can imagine a senator having all the palliatives in his own house. If that senator was actually elected by his constituents, I don't think he would have done that. Because he, he would have known too well that he would go back to the constituents. But the constituents were immaterial. So he had them waiting for his best day to bring them out. And if he bought those palliatives for the people. And how ridiculous is this? So that would have sanitized the whole system. That would have, to a very large extent, also reduced the crisis that has assumed apocalyptic dimensions in the country. So that is what we are saying. Mr. President has refused. But I'm not surprised. This is one government, when weighed in the balance of history, shall be found wanted in practically all ramifications. So a lot of us are not worried. What we want now, the man to rest on the shoulders of the National Assembly to now leave their name in gold by overriding the president, invoking their powers, overriding and let it become a law. So isn't it shocking that the PDP and the APC seem to be very quiet? I mean, uh, that's unusual of this political party. So um, what do you think could be the issue here? I, I, am not, I am not surprised that the PDP and the APC are quiet. What is the difference between PDP? What is the difference between APC? Both PDP members, we are APC members, we are PDP members. In fact, most of them in positions of authority we are PDP members. So what is the difference between APC and PDP? There is no difference. How did they all get into power? Through the same fraudulent process. So what do you expect them to do? To protect their own interests. So I am not surprised whatsoever. Those that are actually clamoring for this change are those in the National Assembly that are being controlled, that want to extricate themselves from the vigorous, capricious, out of touch control of governors. That's why they are coming up with this. And don't forget, the National Assembly member, this is like um, when the, uh, state, the State House of Assembly they, they, they refused to accept uh, what is it called autonomy. Not because they didn't want the autonomy, but simply because they were instructed by the governor to so do. So the National Assembly members have done what they ought to do, notwithstanding the pressure from the governor, most of them are, are falling out with their governor forever ideating that. So I'm not surprised if the APC and the PDP should reach a compromise and understand an accommodation on this very issue. Because there is no difference between APC and PDP. No difference 
whatsoever. Those you find in APC today, we are members of PDP. Those you find in PDP today, some have subscribed to APC. So what is the difference? There is really no difference. And they all got into office too fraudulently. So they will definitely frustrate stealing every effort that will sanitize the system. Because most of them know that they are very unpopular. Even oh, while they are not actually unpopular. The yeah. rain has gone. There it goes. All right, so there's no difference with them. Uh, let's move on to other stories for the sake of um, time. Uh, we'll slide on to the Nation uh, newspaper. It also has uh, the Electoral Act Bill as its um, banner headline. But let's move on to other stories uh, there. Uh, I don't know which one you'd want to talk, but let's talk about Nigeria. Uh, a protest assault on citizens in Togo. I'm sure you were aware of the incident that happened over the weekend uh, where Nigerians were you know, assaulted at um, the uh, Nyasimi uh, Yadema uh, airport uh, on Saturday. Yes, I, 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 I'm not sure of all the facts, so to speak, but uh, I think I just got snippet. I saw it. I don't know why. That's, that's, I'm not sure of all the facts. But I think uh, this is one affront too many. And it all depends on how our government will react to this thing. Let's take, for example, the embargo, the ban. The, you can imagine... The, 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 when the minister for what is the name, aviation reacted, and you, you can imagine what, how the international community responded. You see, it is not every time you play the soft guy. Let me tell you, if you keep yourself as a sheep, you will definitely be eaten by the lion. You've been attacked by a dog. So I think we should accept our authority. Now, how do we do that? As far as I'm concerned, it's not by negotiating. With the authorities, no, no, that is just a labyrinth, going to a labyrinth of processes, diplomatic processes that will amount to nothing. We don't need to negotiate with the authorities. What we need to do, I know a lot of people that will listen to me now will not agree with me, but let me tell you, in war and in love, all is fair. What we need to do right now is to go after every Togolese in Nigeria and also let out the same treatment they measured out to Nigeria. It's as simple as that. Either of the two things will happen. It will ensure cessation of these hostilities. If it doesn't, then the Togolese will not come to Nigeria. will also not go to Togo anymore. And once in a while, we'll settle all this issue of attacks, uh, democratic attacks, these attacks and that, which is must come to an end. We must match force for force, action for action. While we are doing that, then the leaders can go to the negotiation table to be negotiating. But if they kill a Nigerian, for example, from what I'm seeing now, if they kill a Nigerian at that airport, we should kill two to police. They kill any Nigerian, we kill two to police. And that to a very large, so that, uh, one minute, so that they are, even the authorities will be compelled. And anywhere the, a Nigerian is found, uh, that country will know Obunabu. that they also have their own citizens Obunabu. in our country. And whatever they do to that, uh, that Nigerian, the same treatment will matter out to their own citizens. Yes. I'm not sure you're actually encouraging that, uh, you know, Nigeria should be engaged in uh, some kind of random... No, 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 excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I know you're trying to be diplomatic. I am encouraging it. I want to be categorically clear. I am encouraging it. But you, but, but you, also, want to, this but you also want to agree with whether, me that... Messi, whether it is, it is the government agrees or not, it's a different bargain. But that is my own approach. But, but, you, know, but you know that violence, the truth is violence has never solved any problem. I mean, two wrongs can never make a right. Mm -hmm. There could be other, you know, let's also talk about the fact that recently, <laughs> no, no, seriously, let's recently, uh, no, recently, we, 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 we have been hit by countries. Respond. You said something I want to respond now. Okay. You said something I want to respond, yes. Yes, I know, I know you are the first daughter of Jesus. When they slap you, yeah, you turn the other side to the slap. I am not the first I'm also saying son that there are other means to punish I, people. I cannot be as holy. I cannot be as holy as Jesus. I believe in the uh, 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 the tip of that Abraham law. But, but we can't just, we we just can't allow, we'll allow all Nigerians no, 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 go on no, rampage no, and attack the police. Well, please, please, just let me quickly address. Okay, go ahead. Let me tell you the truth. If you are too quiet your leniency will be taken for granted. You know why America is being respected? You touch an American, they go for your country. If the American is still alive, they try to save him. But if he's dead, they go for the country. Why do you think they're doing that? They don't discuss with you. They don't, they don't, they don't negotiate with you. 
And Nigeria, unfortunately, our leaders don't told that. They don't, they don't believe in that. And the leaders have also told us to protect ourselves. If they are saying protect yourself against your own fellow Nigerian, then what do you have to do against uh, a non-Nigerian that has, has been attacking you? Let us call the state a state. If 10 Nigerians are killed, no matter, look at this last story, this lady that was killed in which country, just in this nearby country, she's gone and she's gone. If 10 Nigerians are killed in Togo, you go negotiate, the families have lost, you are negotiating, and I strongly believe that most of their leaders will just come with all these records, high blood, deceptive records, and they talk and they go, but they really know what their boys are doing. Because they are part of them. But they will not tell you that. They will condemn it in public. And in secret, they will tell you that's good. So if 10 Nigerians are killed in Togo, and 10 Togolese are being killed in Nigeria, it will stop. Either it will stop, or Nigerians will not go to Togo again, and Togolese will not come to Nigeria again. Right. It's as simple as that. Until right. then, at that point, the leaders can, at that point, the leaders can negotiate. After the negotiation and accommodation has been reached, we can resume. Okay, your point has been made. But if you it. sit back, if you sit back, somebody slaps you. Somebody will walk in and slap you. You say sorry. You will go to the police and slap your wife. You say sorry. You will go to the police and slap your son. But when he comes and you threaten him, you mark him power for power. Even if he beats you, you will be scared of coming back to the police. You know, let, let's just move the away from that. Example. Like, the we need... is a clear example. What the, uh, what the aggression is that it's a very clear example. What has happened? Did he, did he negotiate? He also placed a ban. It's a simple as that. He also placed a ban. All right, let's move on. Captain. We need to move on from that, okay? Uh, because I'm sure that uh, we'll yeah. probably never just, you know, get to that point. Uh, I know that there are too many ways. Yeah, I know. There's are, several, there's several are, ways to kill a rat. Uh, we need to know that there are too many ways to take <laughs> a rat out. Okay, so, but uh, looking at the Daily Independent. Kill, to kill the rat. <laughs> Daily Independent yeah. says, okay. Espat wants federal government against increasing taxes and tariffs in 2022, uh, bearing in mind that the federal government is saying uh, via the minister, Come 2022, new taxes would be introduced. Uh, Nigerians should get ready for new taxation. And also, uh, there's also a plan to remove fuel subsidy. Now, experts are saying this would actually hurt businesses. It would also increase unemployment, among other issues. Uh, let's quickly share your thoughts on this one. This is one rather less government, you know, always trying to transfer its problems and inefficiency on the mass. It, it, it's a government floundering the morass of procedures. It knows nothing. There is hunger in the land. Even with the present tax, it's difficult for Nigerians to pay. Extremely difficult. If you talk about tax defaulters, I can tell you comfortably that at 90% of Nigerians are tax defaulters. They, they don't even think of it. Most Nigerians think of their taxes when they have one obligation or the other, either they are going for a contract or they have to go for their visas or they have to do tax when they remember tax. Some people don't even bother. You don't you go, you register, you renew your tax, you don't have a contract for two, three, for every year. A friend said to me, Why should I do renew my tax? When I don't even get the job. I'm just throwing away my money. Whenever a big job will come, I'll clear all the, the backlog. You see, that is because as a result of poverty. You cannot talk of your tax. Let's say you have a tax uh, deal, obligation of, let's say, 100,000 naira. And you have a problem of 200,000 naira. Domestic issue, problem. Are you going to think of tax? Even car problem. Are you going to think of tax? What are you going to get? What is the federal, what is the federal going to do with the taxes? Your ball holes. Your balls your ball are sunk by you. You provide, as I speak now, I'm on generator. So what is the federal government? The federal government actually doing on tax. With, with the, I mean, with the tax. So Nigerians are not interested. In fact, it's even exploitation that you're taking your tax in Nigeria for not rendering services. You're not. Because most of the things you see, the infrastructure development, they come from oil. Oil. Not from taxes. Not like Britain. We have the development is planned on taxes. Or like in the U.S., it's yes, also planned on taxes. No. Where yeah, they come from oil. So why do you have to, as a result of your inefficiency, you want to punish Nigerians the more? 
This is unfair. It is, it is chaos. Quite insensitive. You're increasing taxes, you're not providing services. You're paying taxes, the services that are provided are not commensurate with the taxes you're paying. Because as I speak, I'm on generate. You're increasing the poor. You're going to increase diesel. Then you tell me to pay tax? I think I think my borehole. I maintain my borehole. Man, this is madness. Absolute madness. That's why I say the runner-less government. runner and complete himself. He doesn't know what to do. So he's trying to transfer the body to Nigeria. That's, that's, that's very bad. Very extremely bad. Okay. We should resist it. Why are you going to pay tax? Why are you increasing that to When you're not providing services? All right. Are you Let's... increasing that? Let's move on to the punch, um, Oponabo. Uh, COVID-19, it's um, the, the latest story for this morning. And uh, the federal government has issued um, travel advice. Uh, Lagos is vowing to clamp down as infections uh, soar. Uh, they said uh, some riders here, fleeing errant inbound travelers will be charged to court. Commissioner vows. Fleeing what? Fleeing errant inbound travelers will be Errant inbound travelers will be charged to court. That's according to the health commissioner here in Lagos. Um, they said we should avoid non-essential international national travels while we study Omicron, NCDC is saying. But the main thing here is that uh, they are clamping down as um, infections are continue to rise here in Lagos. What are your thoughts? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there, yeah, there is a surge. No doubt about that. And uh, when you say clamp down, I mean, is that really nothing new? It's just going to be maybe a lockdown. And in addition to a lockdown, enforcement of the COVID-19 rules and regulations, the rate of face masks. Uh, maybe this time around, they're going to make it mandatory. The vaccination will be made mandatory. So probably before you access any public building without uh, proof of being vaccinated, you'll be denied access. I mean, that's clearly what they're going to do when they say they're going to lock down. Um, you're not going to be allowed to banalize the covid 19 rules and regulations anymore, and the government will break down heavily on whoever transgresses those rules. Basically, that's what they're going to do. I mean, they're not going to go to your house to carry you and flog you. They're not going to come to your house to, to do whatever. They're not going to come to your office. If it's, if, if, but if it's a public or place, of course, they have a right. If you're going to the club, if you're going to organize a uh, party, you seek uh, the premature of the state, you must get the premature of the state where you're going to spell out the number of uh, people that are going to be attended and uh, be spacing and so on. I think this is what they're saying. That's strict enforcement of the rules. And transgressors are definitely going to be dealt with. I mean, you cannot break any rule with, with impunity. They have been offenders to get adjusted that, so to speak. I think mean, basically that's what they're saying. And which is okay. Which is okay. Uh, I, don't have a pro I don't have a problem with that. What problem? I don't have a problem with a ban on travel because that is not the panacea to it. A ban on travel, like I said on Monday last week on this very station, I said what we need is to ensure that we enforce the rules. You create awareness, that is one, and to know is dead. National Orientation Agency is just dead. And I don't know what National Orientation Agency is doing. But anyway, let uh, the, government, the state government and the federal government continue their awareness campaign. And they also ensure that they enforce the rules. It's as simple as that. Like my sister Mercy was saying, what of those who believe that this disease, the COVID 19, doesn't exist? And I said, well, it's up to them. If you want to believe, believe in your home and die in your home. But there has to be an awareness. If you're leaving your house, you must comply. If you don't want to comply, remain in your home and die in your home. It's as simple as that. That is akin to committing suicide. It's as simple as that. So I think basically, it's you know, to that's what the government uh, meant by uh, they are going to clamp down on. I think if they clamp down the youth, clamp down uh, as the infection soar. Yeah. All right, let's quickly check out um, uh, the Daily Independent as we co sit down. Stop persecuting prominent Niger Deltans. Pandef is saying <coughs> that to the EFCC. <laughs> well, if you want the pure Niger Delta. Funny enough, really, I was actually involved in the uh, ninth death of trouble in the Asari Dokobo era. Really involved. His book will be out, and you'll see the whole item. Who said that? Uh, well, I don't want to be sentimental. If the ninth Delta is guilty of any offense, he's not insulated from prosecution. 
But I think what the panel is saying is there should not be any discriminatory prosecution. What is good for the good is also good for the gun. In other words, if a northerner and a westerner and a Niger Delta all stole 100, 100 naira, there should not be selective, um, how would I put it, uh, oh, oh, there, there's, I'm looking for a particular term for it, but application of justice, but that's, that's not exactly what I wanted to say. In other words, if that the man from the north is arrested and prosecuted, for and sentenced to 10 years imprisonment. Fine. This man from the um, uh, Niger Delta should also be given the same treatment. But not when you prosecute only the man from the Niger Delta and allow the man from the North to go. Then that's unfair. So there should not be any discrimination. But to say that because you are from the Niger Delta, you are insulated from prosecution, I completely disagree with that. I don't agree with that. All I, we are talking about is justice for one and justice for all. You know, so that's, that's exactly my take on that. You should not be given any preferential treatment because you're a Niger Delta. If you have to be given a preferential treatment as a Niger Delta, it has to do with the, 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 the resources. It has to do with uh, uh, um, giving us more in terms of uh, uh, resources, in terms of uh, money as a result of the resources we take from our, our Niger Delta region. It's not about criminality, my friendly tragedy. It shouldn't be about criminality. All right, we must say a very big um, thank you to you, uh, Oponabo Inko Taria, uh, for joining us really? of the press. Yes, we are done. Uh, thanks for your time and your <laughs> and your input for today. We do appreciate it. Thank you. I, I have a debate with Mercy. You have a what? I have a debate with Mercy. You have I a debate with Mercy. <laughs> Okay. Yes, yeah, that's fine. Black people disagree or something. This week again, we disagree or something. We want the date. Sometimes we disagree to agree. I'm sure we'll find the date for all of that. Thank you so much. You know, we appreciate I, I it. Must, I must commend your intelligence. I love your intelligence. You're quite intelligent. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate it. All right, thank you so much once again, Oponabo Inko Taria. Uh, it is still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a quick break and return with our next conversation. We're focusing on the cause uh, for a referendum. Uh, the CNG is actually making a statement in a moment when we return. Do join us again.